came to me and, and suggested that uh, he, he wanted to start uh, something of this nature. And I told him that is really welcome. I encouraged him. And I was here <coughs> at the first uh, festival, cultural festival. From that time onwards, I've come consistently each and every year, except last year, because of the confusion that was running in the country. And um, it is always uh, a good opportunity to meet and talk with people from Turkana. I usually come and stay more than one day. Um, this uh, festival, of course, is one of its kind. And it's been people from the region, the people who come from Ethiopia, some come from South Sudan, then from Uganda, and even from far away. It is a very good uh, cultural event. As you know that <coughs> this region of East Africa is actually now known as the, the cradle of mankind that mankind actually originated from here. The first species of humanoid has been found here in Turkana. And um, I've been to that site of Mr. Leakey, with the late uh, Richard Leakey, several times. And uh, he's taken me through this research work which he was doing in conjunction with the University of California and the UK. And it is actually amazing what is here. And that's the reason why each time I talk to people, foreigners who come here say, welcome home. Because this is where the humanity actually started before it spread to other continents. That's what makes this place actually very unique. But I also know that uh, this region actually has serious economic challenges. This area has suffered economic neglect for a long time. From the colonial days, this used to be part of what used to be known as NFD, the Northern Frontier District. It was completely excluded from development. And the subsequent independent government continued that marginalization. Remember when I was the Prime Minister, and the one who came up with the Minister for arid and semi-arid lands and appointed Mr. Elmi to be, to be that ministry. That's when we started what we call affirmative action to deal with the areas which had been historically neglected and mainstream them in development. And then when devolution came, we came up with a, a, a revenue share which started to, to favor these regions which were backwards. There is also equalization fund which is provided for in uh, uh, that structure. Now, uh, we had big plans as a new for this region uh, which we would have started implementing. Now, uh, I know that uh, Mr. Ruto was here yesterday and as is his measure now, practice, he made all those uh, empty promises of what they intend to do uh, for this region. But I know that there's a big disconnect between the rhetoric and the reality as such. So what uh, I wanted to do here today is basically to tell these people that um, they need to unite together the people of Kenya. This region has voted for me and for Odium and Azmio uh, in the last general elections. We have three members of parliament from this region. We have uh, some members of county assembly. The governor himself is, is from Odium. Even the previous governor, Mr. Nanok, was also from ODM. Uh, and uh, I enjoy a lot of support. I don't need anybody's invitation to come to Turkana. Turkana is part of Kenya, 
I need a political party, which is Kenyan political party and a coalition. So I don't need anybody's invitation to come here. And when I come, when the people want me to talk, actually, it is the height of stupidity to refuse me in an opportunity to greet the people. Uh, the governor, of course, was feeling that he was not aware, because he was very aware. And I know that he gave uh, assurances to Mr. Ruto that he will not allow us to speak here today. That is the height of political intolerance and hypocrisy. But we uh, are not deterred, says we. And uh, I want to actually assure our supporters in Turkana we will be coming back. We will come back for a political rally. Yes, yes, yes. And, and to talk to them more seriously about what needs to be done. These people suffer the same uh, thing that the rest of the country are suffering from. The cost of living, as I've been told, is very high for the people here. Most of them cannot make ends meet in an arid region like this one here. We need to do affirmative action. This is the area where the government should do subsidy, subsidies so that people can really make ends meet. Some of them are not even able to take their children to school. The healthcare system itself is suffering seriously. And you know that this regime has no proper plans to improve healthcare. They are trying to centralize healthcare, to move it from the counties. But I know that they just want to recreate the past. The same thing is applying to education. As you see, that university education is going to collapse unless something drastic is done uh, to, to rescue it. So uh, we uh, have come, uh, and I'm happy that the people have escorted us very well. I just want to tell them we will be back soon. Thank you very much. No, no questions, thanks. Because of flight time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.